Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd and today I want to talk about another continuity problem in Star Trek. Recently I made a video talking about Vulcan's moon, how it doesn't fit the dialogue in the original series and I came up with excuses saying it might be sister planets or maybe Vulcan itself is a moon. And so technically Spock was in line when he said that to Uhura. So that was a relatively easy fix, but uh, today I want to talk about our own moon in Star Trek, which also seems to have a whole bunch of contradictions, which is pretty hard to reconcile. Whenever the moon was shown in Star Trek TNG and Deep Space Nine and Voyager, it always looked exactly like today. And yet in the movie Star Trek First Contact, when Riker was in the past talking with Zephyrin Cochran, he looked at the moon and said that the moon looks a lot different in his time, that there are 50 million people living on the moon and you can actually see the cities there and the, the river there and stuff like that. And he said all of that during daytime when the moon was barely visible. So that means those colonies on the moon have to be pretty big for it to be visible from the surface uh, during daytime. So that line creates a lot of continuity issues with all the other Star Trek shows which took place at around the same time before and after the movie. We actually saw the moon in season uh, 3 of Deep Space Nine and so maybe you can argue that huge colony was built uh, so fast uh, right in between the movie and uh, that episode in which we saw the moon pretty close by. So maybe right after that episode uh, they made the massive changes to the moon colony and Riker happened to be visiting Earth when uh, that happened and so he saw the moon uh, during that time and then uh, he came back in time and then he was surprised how different it looks. But uh, that seems too fishy in my opinion because the way he was talking with Zephyrin Cochran, the way he was surprised uh, seeing the moon like that, it was as if he never saw the moon looking like that. So that means that uh, in all his life it looked a lot different. That's how it sounded like. Now it's possible he may have been lying to try to give him motivation for the successful uh, warp flight. So maybe he was exaggerating in uh, the way he described it, that uh, it's not really visible from the surface as he said. So it's possible he was just bullshitting him and so that could solve the continuity issue. But uh, I don't want that to be the explanation because I actually like that idea of a moon colony which is pretty big that it can be seen from the surface of uh, Earth. And so I don't want to dismiss that bit of dialogue as just uh, lying. I think that's something that uh, we should have seen in Star Trek. We should have seen a moon colony that would have been cool. And also we heard about the moon colony in a Deep Space Nine episode, uh, the Valiant. Uh, there was a crew member on the Valiant who came from the moon colony and she described it. So we know that uh, there is a moon colony in that time. She said she grew up there, so it existed uh, even before TNG time. And so we do know there is a moon colony, so I think it would have been cool to actually see that. Maybe when they released the TNG on Blu-ray, they should have added the moon colony to it, and uh, that could have been a way to fix that continuity issue by actually showing the moon colony that uh, Riker talked about in First Contact. And then the only problem would be in Deep Space Nine, in which we saw the moon, and also a few times we saw it on Voyager, but it was in all kinds of simulations or dreams, so it wasn't directly shown as the real moon and so we can dismiss Voyager I think, so the problem would be still in Deep Space Nine and the multiple TNG episodes in which we saw the moon pretty close by and it looked exactly like today and they didn't fix it with the Blu-ray so that's still technically canon and now in Star Trek Discovery we did see the moon and uh, now we do see it apparently being colonized completely and we see all kinds of lights all over the moon which are very visible, so that actually fits First Contact better than TNG did, and this is a prequel taking place a hundred years before TNG, so why did the moon colony disappear in TNG time? And I was uh, thinking about coming up with an elaborate uh, theory to explain that. Uh, first of all, we did see the moon in the opening of TNG, we have a shot of uh, our solar system, and we see the moon with no colony, but we see the other side of the moon, the side that is facing away from Earth. And the colony that Riker mentioned was on the side facing the Earth, and so this is not a continuity issue. Next time we saw the moon in the episode Conspiracy in Season 1, but we saw it kind of uh, from above, we didn't see the entire moon. So again, not really a continuity issue. And then we only saw the moon when the Borg attacked Earth, and we did see the side of the moon that is facing uh, the planet, and it had no colony. So one of my wild uh, theories would have been that maybe the Borg destroyed that colony right before we saw the moon on screen and that explains why it wasn't seen the next few times as well. And that would mean the colony did exist uh, every time Riker uh, grew up on Earth and he looked at the moon. He did see the colony, then at the time of TNG the Borg uh, scooped up that colony just like they did with other planets. 
pull whole chunks of the surface into space, I presume. And so maybe they did that to the moon colony. Maybe the moon colony had some kind of a planetary defenses that uh, it was firing at the Borg cube. And so the Borg cube took out that colony. Maybe they didn't even scoop it up. Maybe they simply bombarded it and destroyed it or most of it. So all the visible parts uh, were gone. And then after the Enterprise arrived, we no longer see that colony. And then it took a while to rebuild it, that's why we didn't see it later, and uh, it would still fit the dialogue of Riker. The only problem is that such a big event, if millions of people got killed on the moon, that probably would have been mentioned somewhere in the series, and it never was mentioned. They only said that uh, I think 11,000 people died in uh, Wolf uh, 359, when all those uh, ships uh, were destroyed, uh, 39 ships. And that was referred to as the big tragedy and no one ever mentioned millions of people dying and so that's why I can't really use this uh, theory. Someone would have said, oh no, they killed 50 million people on the moon and no one said that. And so I can't really use that as an excuse and I can't say it got built right before first contact because then Riker wouldn't be so amazed. So what is the possible solution? I think the only way to explain that is by saying that maybe once in a while those colonies which uh, I presume exist inside uh, some kind of glass domes, if they are visible from Earth and you can see the lakes there and so on, that means there has to be some kind of big dome which has artificial environment inside so that you will have uh, forests and lakes. I don't think it's possible to create an artificial atmosphere around the whole moon so obviously those big colonies would have to be inside big transparent domes and those domes probably are what uh, Riker was referring to when he said the moon looks a lot different and so why didn't we see that in TNG and Deep Space Nine? I think it's possible that maybe those glass domes were simply covered by dust once in a while maybe there is some kind of mining going on on the moon maybe on the other side of it maybe they are taking out materials from the moon and uh, when they do that a lot of dust uh, flies up and then slowly falls down back to the moon and uh, once in a while it covers up those domes with the gray dust of the moon and then the, those colonies become completely invisible until they clean it up and it might take a while to clean it up and then they become visible again. So we can say all those times the Enterprise visited Earth, it just happened to be during such periods in which uh, the glass domes were dirty with all the dust. And so we didn't see the colonies and the same with uh, Deep Space Nine when we saw the Defiant fly next to the moon. We didn't see any colonies, so we can say they were always there, but they were covered by that dust and simply not visible. But most of the time they were visible and simply we didn't happen to see that. And we did see that in Star Trek uh, Discovery, in which we see all those lights, so it must have been really clean during that time. And I actually prefer the way Discovery showed it. I do want to see a colony on the moon. It makes sense if humanity are the leaders of such a big interstellar federation and they have all this advanced technology, then I do think it would make sense for uh, there to be a very big colony on the moon. And that's why I don't want to use the excuse that Riker was simply lying because uh, I actually like that line. I think we should have seen such a colony and maybe they should have simply added that in the Blu-ray and uh, changed the special effect uh, to match the dialogue better and to make it cooler and make it more interesting so maybe one day they'll do that. For now I think I'll go with this excuse I made up of uh, the dust covering up the domes of the colony once in a while and then they become invisible from space until they clean them up which might take uh, it's a big operation so they wait a while until uh, all the dust settles and only then they clean the domes and then uh, the colonies become uh, visible even from earth and probably looking like uh, what we saw in Star Trek Discovery. So that's my excuse, that's my theory. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. If you have any more ideas, please share them and we can discuss it in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, please subscribe and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.